Hey friends, it's Kate here. Thanks so much for joining me today. And I've got a lovely yoga class for us. Now, um, I do feel very tight through my body today and I thought it'd be a great opportunity for anyone who is also feeling very tight uh, through your chest, your shoulders, your neck to do a nice, lovely, slow flow dedicated to our upper body. Uh, you might want a pair of blocks. You can always use them. And then I do intend to use a yoga strap, a stretch out strap for a couple of different stretches, but it's absolutely fine if you don't have it. You could also use a TheraBand or a belt or just a towel to hold on to if you want that. Go ahead and take a seat with me and we will get started. So we'll begin on our mat, hands down to our lap, shoulders back, ears lifting high, Close the eyes and take a moment to check in. Full big inhale through the nose. Big sigh out the mouth. Again, great big inhale. Let it go. One more breath just like that. Big deep breath in. And release. Seal your lips together, breathe through the nose. Take a moment to check in with your body. Are you feeling a little stiff through your neck, through your shoulders, just like I am? Maybe we're feeling a little more tight through our hips or our back. Take a moment to decide why you are here today. There's no right or wrong answer. And perhaps you'd like to have a little mantra throughout your class. You can, of course, make up your own. But today in my head, I will be thinking, I am here. I am present. Reminding myself that as I move on my mat, it's not about what it looks like. It's how it feels. It's tuning in, it's being present to my own body. If a pose, if a moment in class feels particularly challenging, slow down, take a few deep breaths, and perhaps repeat to yourself, I am here, I am present. One more big inhale through the nose. As you exhale, dip your chin to chest and pause. Eyes can stay closed. You might begin to flutter them open. I almost feel like you're giving yourself a double chin as you lift the back of the head up, softening the shoulders down. A full big breath. Roll your right ear to right shoulder, looking forward as you do so. Chin falls back down to chest. Left ear to left shoulder. Take that half circle side to side, going at your own pace reminding yourself that it's not important to stick with me throughout class. This is your time. Eventually do bring your chin back down to the center of your chest. Pause, bring your gaze upright. Take the hands down by your side, roll the wrist a little bit here as you do so, do so. start to float the hands up to about shoulder height. Now pause there, push the hands away, flex the hands. I almost imagine the walls are coming close to you. Push them out and away, and I'll actually turn to face you. But find that stretch across your chest, across your pecs. And a few times I want us to rotate our fingers forward, rotate our fingers up, and then back. Move through your range of motion. Feel free to go faster, slower, bigger, smaller than what I am doing. That's always okay. Eventually, slow that down, extend the fingertips, flip the palms to me, reach your hands up nice and high, wiggle the fingers as they grow all the way up to the sky. Take the hands behind the head, clasp the hands behind the head, elbows wide. Twist to your right. Look center, twist to your left. Look center, lean over to your right, poking your left elbow up high. Come on back up, same thing, other side. Come on back up, dip your chin to chest again, pause this time, pulling the elbows in towards one another. 
We're not yanking on our head, but the hands are there as a little additional weight. And I very lightly want you to look towards your right armpit. You'll drop your left elbow as you do so. Turn your nose back to center, and then look towards your left armpit. Come on back to center, release the hands, bring your gaze up. Again, big inhale, take the hands out and away. Flex the hands, push them out towards the wall. Almost pretend like you are stopping them from coming close to you. And let's take that rotation again. You might find that you have even more rotation in the arms, the second side. And if your upper back kind of moves a little, almost like you're giving it permission to take a gentle cat and cow, go right ahead. Again, slow that down, flip the palms so they face me, reach the hands up nice and high, big inhale. This time, exhale, twist with your hands, reaching away from one another. You might even turn and look back behind you, unravel, same thing, other side. Unravel. One more time, hands behind the head, elbows wide, and I want you to roll the shoulders back, start to lift your chest, lift your nose, and as we take that small little thoracic stretch through our upper back, you might tip the back of the head into the hands. They are there to support the head, making sure we're not experiencing any tension through our neck, but a bigger stretch to the rest of the body. Let that go, release, take a pause again, close the eyes, checking in with what's changed. Full big inhale through your nose. Big sigh out the mouth. Blink the eyes open. Grab your yoga strap if you have one or your band. I'm going to open mine up and place my hands about as wide as my knees and take the arms straight out in front of me. Now pull the band in half like you're trying to pull your pinkies away and start to wrap the shoulders back in. We're going to do a little shoulder protraction and retraction from here. Pretend your hands are on a ledge, they're on a table. Slide them across the table, further forward, letting your shoulder blades separate behind you, and then wrap them back in sitting tall. Let's do that a few more times, finding that mobility through our upper body, our upper back. And you might look a little different than me here. It is perfectly fine if that is the case. Last time... Bring the shoulders back into their most natural space. Lift up and out of the waist. Send your hands high over the head. And a few times, try to push the hands a little behind your body and bring it back overhead. If you find this is feeling too tight, you could take the arms further away. It's absolutely up to you how deep, how expansive each pose we do today is. This time, reach the hands back. Pause. Dip your chin to chest. Full, big inhale big breath out bring your gaze up right release the hands release the band set it off to the side now let yourself settle shoulders down ears up inhale both hands lift high again take a twist to your right right hand back left hand forward pause turn and point your nose to your right hand bring your left hand to your right thigh maybe deep in the twist now listen carefully, keep your left hand in place. Inhale, circle your right hand forward, reaching it to the left corner of the mat and bring your left to the right corner of the mat. We have options. We can reach for our shoulders here. If that's still too much, you can just reach for your elbows like a little genie. Or if we're ready to take more of an eagle arm, you can take a half bind or the full bind. See if you can lift the elbows up a little higher, wrap the shoulders back, belly button up and in. And a few times I want you to circle your arms here in your eagle pose, whatever variation you might be taking. Circle in the opposite direction. Slow that down, lift the elbows a little higher, big inhale, and pull the hands away from the face. Take one more big inhale, release, shake it out, inhale, both hands lift high, exhale, twist to your left, right hand forward, left hand back, point your nose to the hand back behind you, bring your right hand to your left knee, see if you can deepen, as we did on the other side, keep your right hand in place, circle the left up, it reaches towards the right corner of the mat, and the right hand reaches to the left corner. We have all those same options. We can just hug our elbows, we might stack, or we might take our bind, it's up to you. Shoulders back, elbows in, circle. 
circle in both directions. Pause, lift the elbows a little higher if possible. If you have the bind like I do, see if you can take the hands a little further away from the face, big inhale. Unravel, shake it out, wiggle the fingers, find a tabletop when you feel ready. Fan the fingers wide, push into the floor, lift the belly in a few rounds of cat and cow, saying hello to our spine now. Maybe circling the head and tail in any directions that feel good. Slow that down, keep a nice long spine, extend your right foot out behind you, tuck the toes, push the heel back, get that nice stretch there for the calf. You might even round the back here, tucking the chin in, allowing the shoulder blades to separate. Pull your right foot in, extend the left foot out behind you, again, tucking the toe, pushing it back. If you want to take that nice rounded feeling, allowing the shoulders to move away from one another. Pull it in. And from here, let's tuck our toes round the back. Take a big inhale, push the floor away and hover your knees away for three, two, one. Both knees down, lengthen. Again, round, pick it up, hover for three, two, one, drop it, lengthen. Last time, round, hover, hold three, two, find a downward facing dog. As this is the first one of class, feel free to find a little creativity, a little movement in your body, swaying the hips, nodding the head, bending and straightening the knees. What does your body need today? There is no hurry. There is no rush. Let's all bend our knees a little deeper, shine our sitting bones up to the sky and hug your inner arms to your ears. Feel your upper body kick on. Three times, inhale, rise high onto your toes. Exhale, soften the heels towards the floor. They may or may not touch. Go at your own breath, at your own pace. And I know downward facing dog can be one of those surprisingly challenging poses for some of us as you set the heels down this time. Pause. You could once more tune in to your mantra. I am here. I am present. How is your downward dog feeling today? Full big breath. Big sigh out, look to the top of the mat, walk your toes up to meet your hands, find your forward fold Uttanasana. Look through the legs, grab the elbows, take a little ragdoll side to side. Release the hands either to the floor, to your shins, to your thighs. Three times, inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Last time, half lift, pause. Think belly button to spine, shoulders open. Knees can be bent or straight. It's absolutely up to you. Pause for one more big inhale with me. As you exhale, a big forward fold. Tuck the tail and roll yourself up to standing. Shoulders down, ears high. Wrap the tummy in. Let the fingers dangle. Flip the palms so they're facing the same direction as your face. Swim the hands nice and high. Pause here and almost imagine you're a little kid dangling from the monkey bars. That's how long, how stretched out we should feel. Put a soft bend in your knees, big inhale, exhale, twist to your right, keep the hips still. Inhale, unravel, exhale, twist to your left. Inhale, unravel, hands behind the head, elbows wide, stand tall, squeeze your thigh butt connection point, roll the shoulders back, lift the heart, the chest up to the sky, lightly pointing the nose. Slowly let it go. Heel toe the feet towards one another. Squeeze the inner thighs like you're holding a slip of paper. Sit back into a chair pose. Notice if you are arching your back, we want to engage the tummy and send the sitting bones back, wrapping them in. Arms can, of course, come a little lower if that's feeling tight in your back, but maybe we want that extra sort of upper body engagement. It is absolutely up to you. Take a big inhale. See if you can sit back just a little bit more. Separate the hands. Reach them out and away. Pick up your left heel. From here, lean a little further forward. Step the left foot back and find your crescent lunge. Arms lift high. Flip the palms. Cactus the arms. Kind of like we did earlier with the band. See if you can push the hands further back behind you. Getting a nice big stretch for your pecs, for your chest. 
Three times, inhale, straighten the arms and leg. Exhale, rebend. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. Last time, straighten, bend and pause. Sink the hands down by your hips and I want us to set our back heel down so we start to find a warrior one. Now, if your foot is not as angled as mine, if it's more kind of straight on, that's of course okay. Our bodies are different. See if you can lightly square your hips towards the front left corner of the mat. Reach your ears up a little higher. Take the hands up and away if possible. Maybe sit a little lower into your warrior one. Now, a few options here. This might be enough. That's okay. Or could you take the hands back behind you? Maybe even clasping them together at your low back. Now, this is a big posture for many people, especially when our shoulders are feeling tight. I like to start just pushing my fists into my low back, rolling the shoulders and almost winging my elbows towards one another, creating a stretch across my chest. If that's feeling good, you can stay. If you want to go further, you might straighten the arms, sliding them down your tush. You might lift the hands a little bit away. Everyone is different. It's okay. Keep reaching the ears up nice and high, big inhale, exhale a little forward fold into a humble warrior, looking towards your back heel, full big inhale, big breath out, release the hands, swim them up nice and high, take a big breath and step forward into your mountain pose, shoulders down, ears high, sit back into your chair pose, navel in, chest open. Stretch the arms out and away. Find a T. Pick up your right heel. Step the right foot back and find your crescent lunge on your second side. So heel is lifted on that crescent lunge. We're still contracting the tummy muscles, maybe dropping a little bit lower. Flip the palms. They're in the same direction as your nose. Open your elbows. Try to push the arms back, getting that stretch for our chest, for our pecs. Three times. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. Inhale, straighten, exhale, bend. Last one, bend, pause. Maybe push the elbows a little bit wider. Set the hands down. See if you can rotate and sink the heel to the ground. Both hands lift up to the sky, finding your warrior one. Feel strong, feel secure, and maybe think to yourself, I am here, this is my warrior one today. Do we wanna stay? or clasp the hands. Again, try to take the wonky side, the one that feels a little unnatural. And again, we can just push the fist into our lower back, kind of our sacrum. Maybe push the elbows further away, lifting up. Maybe we straighten the arms. Maybe we move the arms away from the body. This is a big one and it has a lot to do with our own mobility and our anatomy. So if you don't look like me, it's okay. Slowly lean forward. Look towards your back, right leg, release the neck, release the hands, swim the hands high, return to your warrior one, take a big inhale, step forward, inhale, hands lift high, maybe gaze goes with you, exhale, forward fold, bend the knees, sink back into a tabletop. push into the floor, lift the belly button, this time reach the right foot out and away. Squeeze your thigh back connection point. Keep the chest open. Big inhale. Three times. Exhale. Knee to nose. Inhale. Lengthen and stretch. Exhale. Knee to nose. Inhale. Lengthen and stretch. Last one. Reach the leg out and away. Flex the foot for me. Touch the toes to the floor. You can take that calf stretch again. Find your center and big inhale. Could you step up to a plank pose and hold for three Two, one, drop your right knee down, pick up your left leg, point the toe, grow long from the top of your head through your body, out your toe, big inhale, exhale, knee to nose, inhale, send it away. As you curl in, imagine trying to bring your shin closer to the front of your sternum, using that as a deep abdominal contraction. A moment to turn those tummy muscles on even more. Last time, pull it in reach it out. Flex the foot, touch it to the floor. Again, big inhale, step up, find your plank pose, hold three, two, bend your knees downward facing dog on one. 
Feel free to pedal through the feet a little here, nod the head, sway your hips a little side to side. Full big breath, big sigh out. Now two options. If you are simply ready for your dolphin pose, I want you to drop your forearms to the ground and find it. If that is a newer position or one that you need a little bit more help getting into, come back down to your tabletop. Set your forearms down on the ground just as you would. Be mindful we don't want them to wing away from one another. They're pulling in in line with your hips. If and when we're feeling good here, push into the forearm, tuck the toes, and then lift the hips high. Now, our dolphin pose, of course, is similar to our downward facing dog, but can be much more challenging. You might need to walk your toes further back and it might not look quite as a dramatic downward dog. You might have the range of motion to bring the heels, the feet a little closer. This is as much of a strength building posture as it is a stretch. It takes a lot of upper back, upper body strength to hold it. We won't be here too much longer, but think about reaching your sternum, your chest towards your toes, still shining your sitting bones up nice and high. Take one more big inhale with me and then set the knees down, knees together or apart, release the hands, sink into a child's pose. Give yourself a moment of rest after that big posture. Close the eyes, let the breath return to normal. And since that was so big on our shoulders, you might take your hands back towards your heels, allowing the shoulders to fall away from one another, allowing the neck to rest. Full big breath. Big sigh out. Roll yourself up to a seat, maybe a tabletop. And one more time, we'll find our downward facing dog, hips nice and high. Notice how our downward facing dog feels different after our dolphin pose. Look to the top of the mat, walk your toes to meet your hands. Forward fold. Bend the knees, roll yourself all the way up to standing. Inhale, both hands lift high. Exhale, flip the palms, press them down. Keep your hips, uh, keep your feet hip distance and sink back into a chair right here. A little different from before, do take the hands out and away. Once more, pick up your left heel. But three times I want you to stump down into the right foot, lift the tummy and see if you can stand tall in a single leg mountain pose. And then sink back, keep your left heel lifted. So I'm barely just touching the toe and lifting up. Each time we rise up, obviously the weight is going to move further into your right foot, but see how minimal you can take that movement. What I don't want us to happen is to really lean over to the right. Instead, envision you're kind of like a little elevator, straight up, straight down. It's less important to me how high you pick up your left leg. This next time, pick up the left leg and pause. Stretch the arms further away. Squeeze your thigh butt connection point on your right side. Can we step back into our high crescent lunge from here? How smooth of a transition can you make that? It's okay if it wasn't perfect. Hold there, lifting up, broadening across the chest. Again, flip the palms, bend the elbows. Inhale, straighten, exhale, bend. Inhale, straighten, exhale, bend. Last one, straight and stay. Hands reach out and away. They can stay there. They can come to your hips. See if you can drop the heel down. Lift the heel away. Push it down. Lift it away. Touch the heel down. And if you need to rotate the foot to allow it to settle or you need to bend one or both legs, that's okay. Squeeze the inner thighs together, hands to hips, ears lift high. Take a tiny hinge. How's that feeling in the body? Could you go further? Do you wanna walk the hands somewhere else? Again, if you've got blocks, this is a great place. We might go even further or allowing our hands to touch the floor or head to relax. One big deep inhale, an audible sigh out. Look towards your front foot, bend your front knee, use your tummy muscles to lift up and look at that, we're in our warrior one. Think about squeezing the inner thighs together, even though they are separate, they're working in towards one another. 
a little different than before. Reach the hands out to a T. Take the hands out in front of you. Drop your left hand lower than your right. Give yourself a hug. Look at that, we're back in our eagle arms. You can choose all of those options we talked about earlier. Here in our eagle, belly button in, reach the fingers higher, take a big inhale, try to pull the hands away from the face if you have the full bind. If you don't, just lift your elbows, lift your forearms. You might look up very lightly. Take one more big inhale. Keep whatever bind you have. Exhale, forward fold for that humble warrior again. You can think of tucking the tail a little bit here, almost pulling your elbows and your pubic bone towards one another to really round the back. And then release the hands, press into the front foot. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, step forward. Both hands lift high. Big, deep forward fold. You can do so in a rounded back, or you can take a little bit of a swan dive forward. It's up to you how you're feeling. Are you looking between the legs? You're looking down. I find looking between the legs usually means my neck is relaxing a little bit more, so let the head dangle like a little anchor. Bend your knees, roll yourself up to standing. Keep the feet hip distance, sit back into your chair pose, navel in, send the arms out and away. Our chest is nice and wide. Pick up your right heel, roll the shoulders back, and a few times we'll stand tall and set ourselves down. Now again, I'm keeping the right heel lifted the entire time, just gently setting my right toes to the ground. It's almost like I've got a uh, really big high heel there. This next time, stand tall and pause. Squeeze your thut, broaden across the chest. Your toe can be pointed, flex soft, whatever feels good for you. Pause here with me for just a moment. Maybe close the eyes. What does that do to the balance? Ooh, we wiggle wobble quite a bit, huh? Always a fun challenge. And then step back. Find your high crescent lunge on the side. Hands lifted. Navel in. Flip the palms. Cactus the arms. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. Last one, straighten, pause. Hands can stay up or we can reach them away or to our hips. Sink your back heel towards the mat. It may or may not touch. Lift it up. Sink it down. Lift it up. Last time, sink it down again. We might start to rotate the heel a little bit so your toys, toes are pointing out in a way. Find your hands to your hips so you can feel secure at first. We can keep the spine nice and long. Begin to hinge. Notice especially if your left hip wants to jet forward. Sometimes you can take your thumb to your hip and physically tack it back as we go down. That can really help me get a deeper hamstring stretch. And we might deeply forward fold. Hands relax wherever you like to. It's kind of like moving without moving, but imagine pulling your feet towards one another, pulling your inner thighs, making sure our inner thighs are working to support us so we can find that deeper stretch and sensation through the rest of the body. Lift your head enough that you look towards your front toes, start to bend the knee, use your strength to rise up, find your warrior one. Feel free to modify the shape of your feet. The placement is always easy for us to adjust. Sink down another breath or two. Take the hands wide, take them in front of you. This time, right hand lower. Give yourself a hug, give yourself a hug. We're fine here, we're fine here. We might take the full bind. See if you can lift up the elbows a little bit. Roll the shoulders back, lift the tummy in. Maybe you even lift your gaze up, envisioning trying to lift your heart, your chest up through that space between your forearms. A full big inhale. Exhale, forward fold when and if you so choose. Relaxing, sinking. Maybe looking towards the back heel so you can give your neck a moment. Unravel when you're ready. One more breath to allow you up into your warrior one. Take a big inhale. Step forward into your Tadasana pose. Inhale, hands high. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Step back to a plank pose or a tabletop if plank is too much for us at the moment. Hold for three. 
two, one. Drop your left knee, lift your right foot, flex your right foot for me, and bend your knee. Notice if you're jetting your knee off to the side. Ideally, we want it pointing down. If there's a little external rotation, that's okay. A few times, I want you to squeeze your thigh butt connection point. Try to push the heel up to the sky. Drop it down. Again, push it up to the sky. Drop it down. Last time, push it up. Pause. Straighten the leg. You can point the toe. Stabilize through the right hand more. Crawl your left hand away. Lift it up. This is a big stretch on its own. Feel free to stay here if we want to. Slide your uh, left hand open. Bring it back behind your body. You might touch your sacrum and simply holding here is quite a lot. You can extend it out and away. Think about rolling the shoulder back, reaching your fingers towards your back left toe. Not everyone's going to do this. I absolutely know this. Try bending the knee, kicking the heel, reach for your foot if possible. This is big on its own. Feel free to stay here. Some of us might feel this more as a quad stretch, as a little bit of a stretch for the back. But if you can, think about rolling the shoulder back, kicking into the leg, so we get a bigger stretch for our chest, our pecs. Take one more big inhale. Release the hand slowly. Sink back into a child's pose. Head is heavy. Nod the head. Take a breath. Before we do our second side, we're going to come into dolphin again. You can do that from downward dog, but I'm going to demonstrate again from our tabletop. So if you're doing the bigger variation, go to your downward dog. For my friends that are starting here, elbows down. Squeeze the elbows towards one another. They don't actually touch, but there's still that sensation. Take your toes back out. At first, find a forearm plank this time. Start to lift the hips. Walk the toes in. Push your heart towards your toes. Feel your body holding this shape. I will fully admit to you, this one is hard for me. Dolphin is not one of my struggle to say favorites. It's not as if I don't like it, but it is a big challenging posture, even for me. So remember, it's okay if sometimes we think to ourselves, oh gosh, this one is big today. This one is hard. One more big inhale. Everyone drop the knees. Rise up to your tabletop. Extend your left foot away. Flex the foot, bend the knee. Again, knee pointing down. Ideally, if there's a little bit of external rotation, it's okay, but it's not a big fire hydrant move. A couple of times, I want you to push the heel up, drop it down. When we lift and lower the leg here, I'm unconcerned with how high I'm lifting. Instead, I'm thinking about squeezing my thigh butt connection point, making sure my glutes, my hamstrings are turned on. Last one, lift it up, pause for just a moment, separate the shoulders, belly button up and in, and then slowly straighten the leg. You can point the toe, set it on the ground. Oh, I lie. Lift the left leg up, reach your right hand away, float it. You could set the left hand, uh, foot down to give yourself a little more stabilization here. When and if you so choose, take the right hand open to the side like a T. Flip the palm. The back of the hand is facing the floor. Bring it to your low back. Wing the elbow. Do you feel good here? Is this our stopping point? That's amazing if that's the case. You could extend the arm away, reaching your fingers towards your toes. My palm is facing up to the sky. If it's facing a different direction for you, that's okay. This is what feels good for me. When and if we want to, start to bend the leg, reach for the foot. And again, we can stay here. It's up to you. If we want, really roll the right shoulder back. Maybe lift the left leg a little higher. Think about kicking your hand into your foot and your foot into your hand. One more breath. Slowly unravel. Set everything down. This time sink into your child's pose. Head is heavy. Take the hands back to the heels. Release the upper body. One more big inhale. Big breath out. One more time to find your downward facing dog. If you'd like to do that through dolphin pose, go for it. If you'd rather just come up through downward dog, amazing. If you're in your dolphin pose, start to straighten the arms, lift the hips higher, walk your toes up to meet your hands once more. 
bend the knees, roll yourself up to standing, shoulders down, ears lift high. I'm going to turn to face you. And from here, let's again sit back into our chair pose. Keep your feet about hip distance for the time being. Take your arms out and away. Now I want you to pick up your left heel. And this time, as we stand up, don't just bring the knee in front of you. Start to cross it over towards the right side and then sink back. Keep the heel lifted the whole time like we already did earlier today, but I'm going to lift, cross it over, open, drop it down. This time, cross it over and we've got a few options. You can touch the toe to the floor. You can keep it lifted and start to bend your standing leg and see it's a big one for me. I'm going to wiggle wobble. Now, traditionally in Eagle, you do want to try and hook that toe around the back of your calf. My body doesn't do that. Don't feel like you have to. Instead, what I'd want you to focus on is wrapping the thighs one on top of the other. How is this feeling here today? Do you need to set the toe down as a little kickstand? Could you sink lower? Unravel. Inhale, both hands lift high. Exhale, big forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Let it go. Bend your knees, sit back into your chair pose. Find your chair, separate the arms, pick up your right heel. And like we did on the first side, lift, cross the leg over, open, set it down. Turn your tummy on as you lift, cross it over, open, set it down. This time, lift, and we're gonna start to sink into those eagle legs. And that can just be touching the toe over, really squeezing the inner thighs together. That could be sinking back and setting yourself down again. You can see that I really can't do that. I just don't have that rotation in my body. That has to do with our proportions, has to do with our flexibility, has to do with the shape of our bones itself. So don't feel like you have to force poses. You do not have to look like me. Instead, what I'm working on is trying to wrap my thighs one on top of the other. Unravel, inhale, both hands lift high. Exhale, big forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Let it go, bend the knees, roll yourself up. Find your chair pose. Take the hands out and away. Pick up your left heel again, stand tall. Now let's all simply cross at the, um, at the ankle at first. Take your arms out in front of you. Drop your left hand lower. Give yourself a hug and choose your eagle arms. Are we in a good space right here? This is a perfectly wonderful option. Do you wanna go deeper, maybe just bending the knee right here, or do you wanna pick it up and cross so you're really standing on one leg? Take a full, big inhale, big breath out. Unravel, stand tall, both hands high, exhale, big forward fold. Inhale, half lift, bend the knees, sit back into your chair pose. Hands wide, pick up your right heel, start to stand tall and really touch the toe over. You could challenge your balance and keep it lifted. We don't have to as we take our arms in front of us. Right hand lower, hug, hug. We can poke it, we can cross it, it's up to you. And then again, we might be happy here. We might bend a little. We might lift and cross it over. Ooh, and I wiggle wobble too. It's okay. Remember, you can smile when things get hard or you're doing good things for your body. Reminding yourself that you are here. You are in your eagle pose, no matter what it looks like. Unravel when you're ready, both hands lift high. Exhale, big forward fold. Look through the legs. Nod the head, shake it out. Come down to a seat with me. Extend your right foot out in a way. If there's a bend in the knee, of course that's okay. Actively flex the foot, hug the leg in, sitting taller, sitting straighter. And I want you to hold a little tighter with your right hand and start to look back behind you. You can keep your left hand in place. We might send the arm away. You could even drop it down. It depends how supportive you want this to be. When I sink the hip down, I do lean a little further back and that stretch twist, it kind of hits in my lower back a little bit more. 
with myself up here. It's more about the upper body, the chest. Where are you at now? We've done a lot of upper body work. It might be better to take it a little lower. Slowly unravel before we do our second side. Turn your left leg out. Your foot can be at any place along the leg and it may or may not touch. I do want you to sit nice and tall, reach out of the waist. Take the hands high over the head. Find a big inhale, exhale, twist to your left. Maybe turn your nose back behind you. Unravel. If we still have our band in reaching distance, you can bring it around your right foot. At first, just give it an extra little tug, enjoying that nice flexion. If there's a bend in the knee, of course, that's fine. Depending on your body, your uh, mobility, you can open up your band, maybe take a hinge. If we do not have the band, you can set your hands by your sides and just walk out and away. Notice if you're jetting your chin forward, I would invite you to drop the chin to chest a little bit, making sure the back of the neck is nice and long. Take a big inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Roll yourself up to a seat. And then extend the left foot away, at first pulling the right foot in, giving it a big hug, big squeeze. Again, if there's a bend in the knee, that's okay. We'll start to turn and look to the right. Are we happy here? Do we want to extend the right hand away from us? Do we want to drop it down, leaning back a little, getting further into a lower back twist? Let that go when you're ready. Turn the leg out. And I do like a nice big flex there, whether the knee is bent or straight, lift up and out of the waist. Inhale, hands lift high, exhale, twist in the opposite direction. Separate the arms, try to turn your nose to your left hand. Unravel, and we'll take that same hinge and flexing work with our foot. So if you want to use the band, you can, you do not have to. Actively flex the foot, push the heel away, pull your toes to your knees, rise out of the waist. If we have our yoga strap, we might open it up so we can hinge, but we can also move it off to the side or not use it at all. It depends on your body or if you have that prop. When and if you so choose, you can move forward, fold over the leg, rolling yourself up to a seat. Scooch a little closer to the front edge of your mat. Lie back on your mat and pause. Eyes can be open or closed. Start to tuck the pelvis and release. It's just a little spinal movement, a little pelvic tip. I press my low back down, I release. Hands can go wherever feels good. You might even close the eyes if they aren't already. You could even start to move the hips a little right and left. Slow that down, heel toe the feet in line with the hips if they aren't already. Stretch the hands high overhead. Really imprint the spine, keep that low back touching the mat so you can find a beautiful stretch. Straighten just the right leg, keep the left leg in place. What does that feel like to stretch here? Pull the right leg in, extend the left leg away. Pull both feet in. Have the feet together, allow the knees to fall away from one another. Hands can stay overhead. Maybe they move off and away or they could come to heart and stomach. If that is feeling too intense, of course, set the feet back onto the floor. Hopefully your breath has begun to slow. Use your hands to close the knees, and then this time, heel toe the feet a little wider than the hips, knock the knees towards one another. 
Again, you have all the different placements of the hands available to you. It's not about what you look like, it's how it feels. Sometimes with this internal rotation, I go back to a few small pelvic tips, dropping the lower back, lifting it. When you feel ready, extend the legs away. Feel free to adjust to modify the placement of any of your body parts. Beginning to find whatever feels most comfortable for you. Take a big inhale through the nose. Full sigh out the mouth. Again, great big inhale. Big breath out. As you breathe in, think I am. As you breathe out, here. Breathe in, I am. Breathe out, present. As you repeat those mantras in your head, Close the door on the outside world. Relax the muscles of the face, of the throat, the shoulders. Remember, you can stay here as long as you like. Or begin to wiggle the toes. Find movement in the fingers, the wrist. Stretching the hands, the feet away from one another. Big inhale, exhale, roll to one side. Pushing yourself up to a seat. Shoulders down, ears high, eyes opened or closed as you take a simple bow of your chin to your chest. Gratitude, appreciation for everything your body has accomplished today. And as always, I invite you to end class by patting yourself on the back, thanking yourself for doing something so good and just for you. I certainly hope you enjoyed class. I cannot wait to see you again.